Okay. So let's have a little warm up today as usual. So let's come into mountain pose. So ribs in and up, get that core connected, back supported, sitting bones down, shoulder blades down, hips nice and open, knees straight ahead along with your toes. Spread the toes out, shoulders down, and cram. Breathing, let the belly move as you breathe so the lungs can fully expand. And as you exhale, just bring your focus inward. And remember, always keep your perspective on that personal perspective, doing what's right for your body throughout the practice. So inhale, bring your arms up to the sides, fingertips reaching out. Exhale, hands to your heart, stretch out to the front, and exhale behind you, fingertips clasped. Lift your heart and pivot over. So come into your forward bend, knees maybe a little bit bent, hands moving toward the ceiling. Lift your ribs, drop your chin, let your neck move a little bit. And just relax. I'm going to lift the sitting bones, get the hamstrings, get a stretch if you like. And then ribs come up, sitting bones down, keeping your chin in. Wind your way back up and into the upper body. And stretch your head back, shoulders down. Bring that upper body back. And then inhale up. Release your arms. Just feel your spine getting a little bit more warm. And same thing, reaching out. Hands to your heart. Stretch it forward. Keep those shoulders down. And hands behind. Clasp the other way. Lift your heart. Stretch your head back. Pivot it over. And just exhale. And release. Hands up. Head down. Chin in. And again, just relax into that forward bend as deeply as your body wants. And then inhaling, slowly work your way up. Heart high, stretch your head back, shoulders down. Keep lengthening. <clears throat> and inhale upright, release the arms. And just take a moment and feel yourself. And we'll do our side stretch, so arms out, palms toward the ceiling and over your shoulders. Clasp your hands, pull the arms back by your ears, sitting bones and shoulders down, ribs in and up, everything facing forward. No twists on this one as you lean to the side. So stretch out through your hands and your head as you push the opposite foot down and let the ribs stretch apart along with you. Inhale back upright, switch the other hand in front, and again, align everything, stretch it up, and lean over to the other side. Maximize with the foot down if you like, out through your hands, and breathe into the side of your stretch. And again, inhale coming up, exhale, and release. Feel your sides a little bit more, stretch through the roots. So our twist is next. Remember, you want the base of the skull and base of the spine going opposite directions so those bones stretch apart for you to twist. Arms out, palms up, over your shoulders, and clasp the arms, hands, elbows, whatever you are. Sitting bones down, shoulder blades down, elbows reach out, and twist. So knees a little bent, weight on both feet, stretch it up, and then pivot over as you exhale. So deepen into your forward bend as much as feels right on this side. So you can keep the weight on both feet evenly, remember. And think about maybe lifting the sitting bones, arms still staying right by your ears. And then slowly in your twist, work your way back up toward the ceiling and lift your heart. Be gentle with your low back. Don't overdo it while you're twisting. And again, upper body back, bend, elbows back. And then inhale up, exhale to the center, switch your arms. 
Shoulders back down, sitting bones down, lift through the spine and exhale. Breathe in, stretching, and then pivot over and So again, see if you can keep the weight on both feet despite moving to one side. And relax, arms near your ears, lift the sitting bones up and look you back. And again, work your way slowly back up. And pull your elbows back as you look overhead, shoulders down. And maximizing the upper body for that back thing. Careful with your low back. And then inhale to the top, exhale to the center. Arms up, palms to the floor, and pivot forward. Stretch in that halfway position, getting your back nice and flat and straight, sitting bones and crown reaching away. And then drop ragdoll, or pull the hands behind your legs and pull in and get a little extra leg back stretch. And then back to the center, lift the arms, and again, just wind up. See if you can feel those bones moving into place as you come back to mountain pose. Feel your spine, notice your body. Let's angle the feet out a little bit with the knees going the direction of your toes. We're going to bend them toward the toes, not beyond. Hands just above the knees and a little pelvic tilt. So chest forward and sitting bones back. And then sitting bones tucked down and forward as the ribs tuck in, pull forward again. So pushing back oops, into that back bend a little bit. And rounding it into the forward bend as much as you can. So focus on that solar plexus, getting our ribs coming forward in the back bend and pulling back in the forward bend. And just really feel that midsection beginning to work a little bit more. So chest expanding, hips moving back and forth, and shoulders staying pretty much where they start right above your knees, just moving through the torso, getting the spine working a little bit more. So. And then the next time you're forward, just come back up and into mountain pose. So take a moment there, just feeling your spine a little more energized. And then stretch up, pivot forward, exhale over. Now come on down into our transition child's pose. Hips to your heels, hands next to you, and forehead toward the floor. Deep breath. Just exhale. Let that spine get a good stretch. Keep the knees together for that low back to get extra stretch. Or separate your knees and breathe in. And then sit up and bring your hands out in front. We're going to be in table position for some cats. So wrists, elbows, and shoulders lined up. Knees and hips lined up with the feet straight back from them, coming into the flat back table position. So come up on your fingertips. Spread down through the knuckles, through the base of the fingers, through the whole palm into the wrist. Get a really good connection there in your palms. As you're in that position, if it feels like the bend to the wrist is too much, remember you can circle your finger or your hands anytime to get the wrist circulation going again. And allow yourself to have a break. So wrist, elbows, and shoulders slide up. Kind of pull those bottom ribs up toward your spine and toward your heart so that that low back gets a good stretch so it's not sinking down. Then jumps, allow that. Shoulder area to hunch up, so bring your chest heart area a little bit towards your thighs. So nice flat back, sitting bones one way, crown the other, stretch. Keep the shoulder blades toward your waist. Now we're going to just go into a regular cat. So go ahead and drop your ribs, lift your hips, sitting bones up, rotate your face forward, crown to the ceiling. And just let your middle body sink down toward the floor as much as it wants, coming into that back bend. And just allow your chest to expand and your spine to keep lengthening. And then 
Exhale, start with the sitting bones, tailbone, round forward. Tuck your chin in, top of the head toward the floor, arching that whole spine up, up, up toward the ceiling. So go ahead and come into that forward bend. Cat position, just think about that angry Halloween cat, arching up, just get that really good stretch. And then inhale, come back to neutral, get your back as flat as you can. So we're gonna work along the spine this morning. So take a place in your upper back, some place between your waist and your shoulders, and just sink that heart area down toward the floor as you lift your sitting bones. And again, face rotated forward with the crown up. So get into that back bend as deeply as you like it. Feel that shoulder blade, heart area sink maybe a little bit more into the back bend. And then taking that same shoulder blade heart area up, tuck the sitting bones down, tuck the top of the head down, really arch up through that upper back into the forward back. So maximize through that upper back, really lifting. And then inhale and again come back to neutral with the back knee nice and straight. Feel where the circulation maximizes. That's the point that you were maximizing at for your movement through your spine. So this time we're gonna move it to the lower back. So some place between your waist and hips, pick a place and bring that point down, down, down to the floor. And again, the hips come up, sitting bones up, chest forward, and crown toward the ceiling, but really maximizing that lower back as much as feels right for your body. Remember, personal practice, don't overdo it if you've got those low back issues. And then same point, go ahead and move it up toward the ceiling, tucking your head, chin down, and sitting up as well. And again, maximizing, lifting that lower back as high as you can possibly move it toward the ceiling. It's probably not the highest point on your arch, but don't worry about that. Just imagine it could be. And then again, inhale and come back to neutral. And then focus on your solar plexus. Remember, between your ribs, beneath your sternum, above your navel, that midpoint in that soft spot of your belly. And bring that point down to the floor. So we're evening things out. Hips up, chest forward, crown to the ceiling. Maximize that solar plexus. Empowerment energy center sinking to the mat. And then take it up toward the ceiling. And again, sitting bones go down, top of the head down, really arch up through that solar plexus midpoint. And then again, inhale and come back to neutral. And just observe how that spine is after all that different movement through the whole body. And let's move the hands a little bit to the side and then pivot the hips down and roll all the way to the mat, mat on your belly. And you can bring your hands next to your palms up, shoulders down, forehead to the mat, and just get a good stretch through the back of your body. And then we're going to move the hands overhead along the floor right in front of your shoulders. So again, we're going to work the spine, moving it along so that we're working into a baby cobra in the upper back. So take your hands, bring the fingertips back into your palm, and then shift your hands back so that your hand creeps back to where you were. Elbows bending out toward the sides of the mat, hips and legs just sinking into the surface beneath you, letting it fall, relax. Nothing happens in the lower body during COVID. So inhale, face to the front, crown toward the ceiling. Tuck your chin back toward your chest just a little bit and stretch the crown toward the ceiling. Chest forward and up and a little bit of work through the spine to come into that very high in your upper back cobra. So you're working that neck shoulder area most into the back bend here. Not a lot of pressure on your hands. You're not really using them for support. The spine is doing <coughs> Excuse me, hands just position. So keep chest forward and crown high. 
Keep breathing. Remember, if you don't like back bends, always you can exhale the forehead back down in. Otherwise, once more, chest forward and up. Really feel that neck and shoulder in the back here. And then slowly exhale, forehead back to the neck. So as you get the forehead back down, just feel back of the neck stretch where we were contracting it. And again, we're going to take those fingertips in and move the hands back closer toward your head. So still above the top of your head, elbows way out to the sides, and lower body, just relax for a second. And then again, face forward, crown up, chest forward and up, chin tucking back in, and maximizing coming into that kind of upper heart area, upper shoulder blade area for this contraction in the back there. So maximize or minimize, remember personal practice, do what's appropriate for you. Bottom ribs are still on the floor, we're not going really high, we're not pressing into the hands. We're using this to work the spine, letting the spine support. So keep breathing, lengthening, chest forward and up. So this heart area is the area of your focus as you're in this back foot. So you feel it right above the top of the shoulder blades and through the heart area, front and back. And of course, lengthen your spine while you're in the back. And then exhaling, chin comes in, forehead comes down, and roll through the back to the neck. And again, just relax there, feel your spine a little bit more, probably circulation through that upper heart area as the contraction was mostly there. And one more time, fingers in, hand pulling back, kind of right about the temporal area. Straight, hands straight in front of your shoulders, belly bending way out to the sides. Relax through the hips, through the lower body. And then again, inhale, face forward, crown up. Tuck the chin back toward your chest so the neck keeps stretching. And feel that lower shoulder blade area this time, maybe as your focus. So sometime in that upper mid-back. So chest forward and up, maximize, lifting the crown, pushing the heart forward and up, opening the chest in this upper body cobra. So again, no pressure in the hands, just let the spine do the work of strengthening that back with these back bends. Chest forward and up, heart round to the ceiling, and sinking through the ribs, through the lower body, relaxing through the hips. And again, exhale and bring your forehead back to the floor. And as you get there, just again, take a moment to feel where that circulation is. And so your choice this time, you can keep the hands where they are for that shoulder blade, lower shoulder blade area, a little bit further out for the area or further up for the neck and shoulders, you make the choice and position your hands further out, higher up, closer to your shoulders, and you down into that middle. So if you get your hands way right under your shoulders, yeah, that gets into your lower back. You don't need to do that. That's perfectly not necessary this time. So pick your position, and again, starting with the forehead on the floor, hips relaxing down, inhale, Face forward, crown to the ceiling. Tuck your chin and maximize through whichever section of your spine you chose to focus on. Chest forward and up, crown to the ceiling, and feel how that area that you've selected is maximized. If it's not the right area, what do you do? Well, exhale back down, move your hands further out for up your spine or closer to your body or lower and more mid back. So maximize, breathe, chest forward and up, and crown to the ceiling. And when you're ready to release, again, exhaling, your head back toward the floor. As you get all the way down, this time bring your hands under your shoulders. We're gonna push back to child's pose and get a nice little forward bend to counteract those back bends. So take a few moments and breathe. Just relax your whole body into that forward And remember, you can separate your knees 
You can make any adjustments through your ankles, through your hips. And then bring your hands back to the front. And again, we're going to pivot up into table position. So once more, get that spine nice and straight, ribs up, supporting that lower back, chest a little toward your thumbs, so the top of your body doesn't touch up. Lengthen sitting bones back, crown forward. And we're gonna do that lateral motion to the spine this time. So side stretch. Exhale, turn and look over one shoulder back toward your feet. Feel the ribs on that opposite side, stretch apart. Think about the hip and shoulder coming closer on the side you're turning. And then exhale back to the center. And again, lengthen your spine. And one more time, exhale and turn to the opposite side. Again, feel the ribs stretch. Feel that oblique maybe get a little bit longer as you bring the hip and shoulder close on the side you're turning to. And then again, exhale, releasing back to the center. Feel your body. Check your positioning of your spine. Make sure your knees are under your hips. Remember, if your surface is flat and you've got a mat or pillow, you can pad under your knees for a little bit of cushioning. And again, don't forget, you can circle your wrists. So we're going to maximize that lateral motion a little bit more. So go ahead and exhale, keep your back flat, walk your hands over toward your feet on one side. So the hip and shoulder come closer on that side, and the other side gets even more stretched through the ribs, through the oblique, as we do this lateral motion. Now remember, no hunching up through the back. You want to keep it as flat as you can. And then walk your hands back to the center. Realign in position. Lengthen through your spine. Get everything nice and flat. And exhale, walking the hands toward the other side. And again, maximize as much or as little as you want, getting that hip and shoulder closer on the side you're moving toward, and the ribs and oblique stretching on that opposite side. Spine nice and straight, keep your body especially through the neck, through the whole spine, as flat as you can. And again, when you're ready, release back to the center. Take a moment there, move your wrists if you need to, and realign your spine so that everything is nice and flat. We're going to go into our twists. So as you're in this position, again, knees under your hips, wrist elbows and shoulders lined up. We're going to take the one elbow to the floor, sliding that hand foot. So the elbow is now where your hand was right under your shoulder. Other elbows bent slightly, that's fine. And then we're going to take the shoulder on that bent, bent elbow hand closer toward the hand. So sliding the whole body, that lengthens the space in your spine to let you twist more. And then exhale and rotate that whole upper body looking toward your shoulder or further up toward the seat. So your whole spine is turning from your hips, ribs, and shoulder, not just at your neck going into this twist. So maximize or minimize. Remember, twists are always personal practices and being gentle where you need to be. Allow everything to exhale and relax. And then pressing into your hand, pull the other hand back under your shoulder, back into table position. Take a moment feeling all that circulation through your body. And of course, we're going to balance and do the other one. So slide the hand forward, elbow right under your shoulder. Palm flats, just sliding out the head. And then take that shoulder forward toward the hand, lengthening through the whole spine and rotating to look toward the other shoulder or up toward the seat. Maximize your twist as much or as little as you want. Keep lengthening, sitting bones and crown, reaching away from each other, allowing the twist, however much your personal practice needs. And then rotate your face back toward the floor, pull that hand back, and into table position. Again, feeling your spine, you want to notice all that twist energy. We're going to be going into a little bit more advanced twist for our next one. 
So remember, personal practice. This is a three-part twist. You never have to go all three parts. It's your choice. So we're going to do the treading the needle twist. Knees stay under the hips, and we take one hand palm up and slide it through on the floor, bending your elbow up toward the ceiling on the hand that's still palm down. So this is level one of the twist. Your head and shoulder come to the floor, and the rest of your body is just twisting slightly to the side. So the more you move that elbow up, that neck and shoulder gets into the twist. The more you slide this hand up, that's that middle back through the shoulder area. And the more your hips stay up right above your knees, that's your lower back in the twist. Perfectly good twist. Stay here if that's enough. You like the lower back twist. You can move that foot out near your hand that's sliding through and push the heel away, maximizing that hip area twist. If that's good, make sure your head and shoulder are still supporting you, not your neck. And then if you love this and you want the additional upper body, middle body twist, bring your hand right up to the ceiling and turn your head to the back of your head to look up. Stay there, or if you want even more, be careful, don't overbalance. Bring the hand behind you as you keep looking in that direction with your head moving more into the back of your skull with the support on your shoulder and head. So maximize this twist only as much as you want. Position one, position two, or position three, your choice. So take a moment and breathe, kind of push that heel away, the hand back, and feel the spine. When you're ready, bring the hand down if it's up, bring the knee in if it's out, and then unthread your needle back into two. Take a moment there, really feeling all that twist energy through your spine. It gets a little bit intense. And we're going to do the other side. I'm just turning around so that you can sort of see what I'm doing. And again, knees under your hips, wrists, elbows, and shoulders lined up. Take that opposite hand from the one you did before, palm up, sliding it through, head and shoulder down. To the mat. So go ahead and deepen into that as much as you want. Remember, this elbow on the palm down hand goes up toward the ceiling. I'm not putting my head down because otherwise my microphone cuts off. So go ahead and maximize shoulder down, head down, and elbow up. If that's enough, stay there. Really good twist. Feel that stretch through your spine. If you like the foot out, bring it near your hand. And again, move on to the back of your head more to allow that heel to press away, maximizing the lower back into the twist. And third level, if you love it, you can bring that hand up and look at it. Stay there or rolling further onto the back of your head as you move that hand behind you, making sure your shoulder and head are still supporting you, not your neck. So maximize your twist on this side, press the heel away, press the hand away if you're in position three, and maximize as much as you like. If you do it too far, you can fall over, so be careful. And then bringing your hand back down if it's up, move your knee back in if it's out, and unthread coming back up to table position. Take a moment feeling all that twist energy. And then hands to the sides, and allow your body to drop down, and release onto the mat. So you can stay in resting crocodile for a relaxation position, head to one side or the other, switching it as you need to, or go ahead and roll over into corpse position for our final relaxation. So choose your position, just let your body relax. Remember, we did a lot of spine work today, so go ahead and make any adjustments to let that whole back of your body release down into the surface beneath you. And relax. Hands, palms up toward the ceiling, whether you're on your belly or your back. And allow your whole body just to release, softening and sinking, deepening that earth connection. 
<coughs> Sorry. So go ahead and allow your body to sink. Allow your shoulders to release down. And then roll your thighs maybe a little toward each other. And then just relax your lower body. Deepen into that surface beneath you, letting Mother Earth be that earthbound support. And sink into that embrace as your body grows heavier and relaxes further. Release your shoulders, your wrists, legs, torso, bed, softening and sinking. And as your breath deepens and your body relaxes, just let awareness of your body release from your attention. And as that happens, other thoughts will flow into your mind. <coughs> Remember, it's the job of your mind to keep producing thoughts. Let them release as easily as your breath. No need to dwell on the past. No need to worry about the future. Just let every thought drift away unneeded, unnoticed. Just allow your breath to guide you deeper, softer, sinking into the earth and waves, drifting with your mind as easily as your breath. And allow your awareness to find the peace within. Let that peace be your focal point. Knowing the peace in your body, in your mind. Just be in peace. Go ahead and stay relaxed as long as you would like. Or if it's time to release, just draw energy and awareness back to the room, to the moment, to your body. And begin moving just gently, arms and hands, shoulders, torso, feet. When you're ready for that yoga hug, just press your spine down, bring your heels in. So, Sitting bones towards your heels and then bring your knees toward your heart. Wrap your arms around for that good yoga hug of appreciation, letting your body know you appreciate its work this morning and the work it does for you every day. And then feet to the mat and roll into the side and sitting back up to get ready for the rest of your day. Thanks for joining me. I hope you have a stimulated spine and some energy for whatever lies ahead for you. Thanks for yeah. joining me.